call to order this meeting of the Franklin Municipal Planning Commission for June the 24th, 2021. We'll start off with a roll call. Uh, Commissioner Allen. Present. Commissioner Franks. Present. Commissioner Harrison. Present. Commissioner McLemore. Present. Commissioner Orr. Present. Alderman Peterson. Present. Chairman Lindsay is present. Uh, absent tonight, uh, Commissioner Mann and Commissioner Williamson. So accommodations have been made to ensure that the public is able to participate in this meeting. The public may participate in the following ways. Watch the meeting on Franklin TV or the City of Franklin website. Watch the live stream through the City of Franklin Facebook and YouTube accounts. Email comments to planning intake at franklintn.gov to be provided in full to the commission and included in the minutes but not read aloud in their entirety during the meeting. Emailed comments are accepted until 12 noon on the day before the meeting. You may comment in person in the boardroom. Speakers will be asked to fill out a speaker card prior to the meeting starting. Speakers may sit in the boardroom or wait in the lobby. Staff will ensure that those speakers waiting in the lobby are called in when their item is being discussed. So we'll start off with item number one, uh, consideration of approval of the May 27, 2001 Franklin Municipal Planning Commission minutes. Do I have a motion for approval? Move for, for approval. approval. Scott? Second. And second? Alma. Alma? Second by Alma. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Discussion or corrections? <clears throat> Hearing none by roll call, Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Franks? Aye. Commissioner Harrison? Aye. Commissioner McLemore? Aye. Commissioner Orr? Aye. Commissioner uh, Alderman Peterson? Aye. And, and Chairman Lindsay votes aye. And then we have still two absent. Um, the next item is for citizen comments for items that are not on the agenda. Uh, this, this is a portion of our meeting that's open for Franklin citizens to be heard on items that are not included on our agenda for, uh, for action tonight. Uh, as provided by law, the Franklin Municipal Planning Commission shall make no decisions or consideration of action based on those citizen comments except to refer the matter to the planning director for administrative consideration or to schedule the matter for, for Franklin Municipal Planning Commission consideration at a later date. Are there any citizens who would like to address the group tonight for items not on our agenda? <coughs> so seeing none, we'll go now to announcements. Uh, Emily? Hi, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Um, I just have one announcement tonight. Um, <clears throat> although public notices were mailed for the Poplar Farms uh, PUD Plan of Services Annexation Zoning and Development Plan, that item, those items were administratively removed from the agenda prior to its publication. So we just wanted to make that announcement so everyone's aware. When those items are again placed on an, an upcoming FNPC agenda, new notices will be mailed. Okay, thank you, Emily. <clears throat> the next item is a vote to place non-agenda items on the agenda. So this is a non-agenda process, which by design is reserved for emergency instances Non-agenda items shall be considered only upon the unanimous approval of all the Franklin Municipal Planning Commission members. Are there any items that anyone wishes to place on the agenda for tonight? Seeing none, uh, the next item is the consideration of our consent agenda. We have items number three and items number nine through 12 which are part of our consent agenda uh, for tonight. Uh, we consider, we handle a consent agenda by, by a single motion and, uh, and a vote without discussion. So is there a motion on the consent agenda? Move for approval of consent Second. Agenda. And a motion by Scott and a uh, second by Allen. Commissioner Allen. Uh, by roll call vote, Commissioner Allen. Aye. 
Commissioner Franks? Aye. Commissioner Harrison? Aye. Commissioner McLemore? Aye. Commissioner Orr? Aye. Commissioner Peters, Alderman Peterson? Aye. <clears throat> and Chairman Lindsay votes aye. So the consent agenda passes. Item number four is a public hearing. This is for consideration of resolution 2021-104, a resolution to adopt an Envision Franklin Plan amendment for a portion of the property located at 1740 New Highway 96 West to amend the southeast portion of the property from the conservation subdivision design concept to the neighborhood mixed use design concept and to create new special considerations. Turn this over to staff for a presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the subject property is located at the northwest corner of the future, future Mac Hatcher and new Highway 96 West and is commonly known as the short farm or the short property. And the applicant is requesting an amendment from conservation subdivision to neighborhood mixed use for the southeast section of the property and to create two new special considerations, one for the neighborhood mixed use design concept and one for the conservation subdivision design concept. A neighborhood meeting was held on May 12th, 2021, um, a recording of which is available on the city website. And the meeting was attended by many nearby residents who brought up questions and comments regarding access, traffic, um, and the potential density of the development. Staff did not receive any citizen comments after this meeting uh, related to this item. Staff has worked with the applicant on the verbiage of the special considerations and uh, we are comfortable with the wording um, and these exact, uh, the exact language of the special considerations can be found in your included attachments for this item. Uh, please note that the conceptual plan that is included in this application is conceptual and has not been fully reviewed for compliance with the Franklin Zoning Ordinance. Um, should a plan amendment be approved for this property, all specific plans for any development at this site will be reviewed as part of the development plan and site plan processes. Uh, staff and applicant responses to the Envision Franklin's criteria for amendments have been provided in the enclosed staff report um, attached to the item in Civic Clerk, and staff does believe that this request meets those criteria and recommends approval of Resolution 2021-104, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Eric. Um, at this point, um, we can open the meeting for public comment. Um, so um, as you, uh, if anyone wishes to make uh, public comment on this item, you'll need to come to the lectern in the middle of the room here and give us your name and address. And, uh, and we ask that you hold your comments to two minutes. So does anyone wish to speak to this item? <clears throat> Seeing none, um, we'll turn it over to a presentation by the applicant then. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commission. Uh, I'm David Short, uh, representing many of the Short family members here in the room tonight. I um, want to thank you all for your consideration on this. I want to thank staff for their hard work. Um, you know, as we consider the heritage of Franklin Williamson County and the history our family has, uh, our vision really has been about the conservation of the property uh, and the preserva preservation of the farming uh, that we've got a long, rich history in. So as we request this uh, change, uh, this is really coming out of a, a larger plan that the family has put together. Uh, and has looked to to say how do we you know as we see tonight how do we continue to be the gateway to Franklin how do we protect uh, these open areas and green spaces uh, but how do we grow as Mac Hatcher Parkway comes around and, and Franklin grows out our direction um, so we've got our design team present tonight uh, Greg and Darren are here and would ask them to make their presentation on our behalf thank you great thank you David <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Darren Jaffe, Farmer D. It's great to be here in person this time. I think you had to suffer through a video presentation last month. Um, I'm here to just really um, 
tell you how great this project is. I've been working on these kinds of conservation farm communities uh, for the last 20 years. Um, I did author a couple of books. I brought a few props. Um, this is my book, Citizen Farmers, uh, The Biodynamic Way to Grow Healthy Food, Build Thriving Communities, and Give Back to the Earth. And after working on several projects, I started the farm at Serenby in 2001. Um, ironically, just as the last few months, I, I now live there again uh, in a vibrant community, a great, great example of a project like this. And about four years ago, I initiated a study of agrihoods across the country with the Urban, Urban Land Institute. Bless you. Um, that is the, the Agrihoods Cultivating Best Practices Report, which is really, we gathered all the experts around the country um, to learn from kind of the best practices um, across, across the country. And the one thing I could say here that really stands out um, is usually it's developer driven. In this case, it's really family driven. It's a family that's really passionate about growing up on a farm and preserving that rural heritage. Um, and it's been wonderful getting to hear the stories of four generations of living on that farm. Uh, it's clear that development pressure has, you know, really encroached and they've been very passionate about figuring out how to do something a little different um, and be a model for the area to show how we can still develop um, but at the same time conserve the natural areas, preserve the agriculture, um, provide the kind of experience they had growing up on the farm to a lot of people both living in this community in the future but also for, for the community surrounding. Um, so we've really worked hard at this early stage of looking at how to protect 50% of the land, um, have a meaningful working farm that is both historic and educational, but also is going to feed this community, um, both the residents and the broader community. And one of the key ingredients to making these kinds of projects successful is really the placemaking and activating the what we call kind of the farm village. Um, so by clustering um, the community, we were able to preserve a lot of the open space in the ag. And then to activate those clusters um, is really provide, bringing the farm to the, to the resident by creating retail and uh, mixed use as is being requested tonight in a, in a very small kind of agrarian style, right? Um, talking about a small kind of intimate hamlet type uh, village environment. So those kinds of um, additions to this will really help make the farming more viable. Um, I could talk at length about the challenges of making farming viable, especially in expensive developing areas. Um, I think we've got a great plan um, to do this, not only to be a great example for, for this county and for the city, um, but really as one of a, a model for the country. So we're really excited to um, you know, hopefully keep moving forward and bring this great project to fruition. So I appreciate the time and happy to answer any, any questions. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Darren. And uh, my name is Greg Gamble. It's been quite educational uh, working with Darren. I've learned uh, so much about um, how farming can be integrated into neighborhoods. It's been uh, um, really, really an interesting past few months. Um, I want to draw your attention to the special considerations. We've been working with staff on those. The neighborhood mixed use policy that we're requesting is really the platform for um, uh, sales, for retail, uh, boutique retail sales, for uh, worker spaces. Um, and um, they are integrated into really a lot of the opportunities that are generated by the, the farming. So um, whether there's a a uh, place for, um, uh, to sell beeswax candles and honey, uh, those kind of stores, those kind of shops. We see this as a much smaller uh, Main Street than West Haven. Um, it's more of a combination or somewhere in the middle between Leaper's Fork and West Haven um, to kind of paint that picture for you. Uh, but really this uh, neighborhood mixed use piece, uh, we believe is a great transition between West Haven and a lot of the rural preservation aspects of the West Harpeth Basin. So happy to answer any questions that you may have on that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, is there a motion on this item? Move for approval. Second. Commissioner, come here. Commissioner Allen made the motion to approve and seconded by Alma. Is there any discussion? I, I really just wanted to say quickly, boy, as I sit here, I'm, I'm becoming a crybaby, I think, as I get older. This reminded me kind of uh, my grandparents' farm in Williamson County out in the country that I, I'm really feeling good that some of our kids that have no idea what a working farm looks like 
will be able to kind of experience that. And I'm wanting other developers as they, as we move out, as our city boundaries move out, to kind of take a look at this. And when we're talking about gateways into the city and preserving, actually trying to preserve some, some of our um, <clears throat> agricultural uh, history and heritage, that <clears throat> they kind of look at this. This is a gem. I think we're going to have people traveling here to look at this. But anyway, like I said, I had kind of tears. I was like, okay, Marsha, get it together. But anyway, great, <clears throat> great project, I feel. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Allen. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none by roll call vote. Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Franks? Aye. Commissioner Harrison? Aye. Commissioner McLemore? Aye. Commissioner Orr? Aye. Alderman Peterson? Aye. And Chair Lindsay votes aye. Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> Item number five, consideration of ordinance 2021-19, an ordinance to rezone 0 0.89 acres from residential one, R1 district, to office residential, OR district, with a property located east of Franklin Road and south of Country Road, located at 532 Franklin Road. Uh, staff, is there? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Envision Franklin places this parcel into the office residential design concept, which states that properties within the office residential design concept be designated as transition area between more intensive commercial areas and the surrounding residential areas. Uh, buildings, regardless of use, sh should maintain a single family residential character. The proposed rezoning to office residential is consistent with the recommendations in Envision Franklin. No corresponding site plan for the property has been submitted for review at this time. Staff recommends approval to the Board Mayor Alderman. <clears throat> Thank you, Joey. It's time now for public comment if there are those who would like to speak uh, to this item. Like, anyone wish to speak to this item? Yes, sir, please come. Give us your name and address, and, and we just ask that you hold your comments to two minutes, please. Um, my name's Greg Baker. I live at 106 Century Oak. It's in the Highgate subdivision just south of this property. And I'm uh, opposed to the rezoning because I'm worried about the other properties on the north side back towards Gateway Village being having the zoning creep down our way as far as office residential and or some sort of retail or if this um, making this office residential will make this easier to uh, rezone it retail in the future and also some I have concerns about the viability of the site as far as frontage on Franklin Road a grass access lighting signage items like that Thank you. Any other <coughs> members of the public like to speak to this item? Good evening. Uh, my name is Ron Hope. I live at 102 Century Oak Drive. That would be the northwest corner of Century Oak and Franklin Road. You know, as I sat there and came up here, I thought it was such a good idea. And now as I stand here, I can hardly wait to hear what I have to say. But <laughs> we'll, we'll give it a try. Um, we have lived there for some 30 years. We've been proud, proud residents of Franklin. And uh, we do what we can to preserve the integrity of the neighborhood. And frankly, I have difficulty in figuring out how this is going to, in any way, improve our neighborhood. In fact, I'm very concerned that it may do just the opposite. So um, it's fair to say that I'm opposed to it. And uh, I'm not opposed to progress, um, but I am opposed to this zoning change. But thank you so much. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else like to speak to this item? <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> How are you? Uh, my name is Mark Drosner. I live on 101 Century Oak Drive, uh, pretty, pretty much right across the street from him. And quite frankly, um, pretty much right across the street from this uh, proposal here. And uh, I've got a lot of concerns just with the natural green space going away. You know, you've got um, homes on both sides of that. You've got uh, churches in the area as well. And I think the congestion on that road as well has uh, continues to uh, increase and uh, just seems like it's uh, gonna take away more of the neighborhood than actually needs to go away. So I, I'm definitely opposed to this and just wanted to speak my mind. Thank you. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Yes, sir. Uh, so my name is Devin Phillips. I live at uh, 2056 Belmont Circle, Fieldstone Farms. So this is actually the first I've heard of this. Uh, you know, coming to the meeting tonight had a different objective. But uh, as far as that road, that area, I feel that, you know, putting office space that close to residential with no real true purpose, when you've got so many, you know, offices that were already implemented at the, uh, what, Franklin Road and uh, Linwood Way, Linwood Downs area, that you kind of do take away from you know, the neighborhoods, the communities, by putting a huge structure in front of, you know, their property, you may lower value. You also, like they said, you add uh, signage, lighting, traffic. It's already a, you know, two lane road. So, you know, I guess I'd say that I, I would oppose adding and building up even more of that, that area. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments? <clears throat> I'm Paul Lebovitz. I represent the owner of the property. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't get any of these. Or you want to continue? You wanna, uh, yeah, I just, uh, are there any other public comments? And then we'll, we'll go back to you, Paul. So. Sure. I've seen none, then we'll go ahead. You're, you represent the applicant, right? I Paul? do. Okay. I've been representing him through the first part to get the change in the <clears throat> vision concept. Um, the property now, uh, I know I've sent all of y'all information before, it's got a dumpy building on it that was originally just two block o brick buildings. So it's not much that it does much for the gateway of Franklin. Um, listening to the comments that were made and uh, met with staff over the, off and on as I needed to on this project, uh, this one's pretty limited. There's no parking allowed in front of the building in the Franklin Road. Our biggest parking lot that on a little site plan I did, maybe have about, about 10 cars and we're pretty limited on what we can do. We went to office residential, so we'd have something that blended in with the neighborhood. There's really not a residence next to it. Uh, behind it, there's a floodplain, and then there is a house, and there's some distance away. Uh, church across the street. Um, it's just, it's not gonna be a high volume property, and uh, I know you mentioned a high rise or something like that. If, if there's two stories here, it's gonna be a big deal. We're limited by height as well. So we're just giving this, this, the gateway actually a better view. We also realize it is on a gateway and uh, you've already established this 150 foot or 100 foot, I can't remember, from Franklin Road. So, um, and Franklin Road, there are tentative plans. It'll be widened in that area. The widening project right now stops just before this. So the idea that it even could stay a residence is not real successful uh, over five years. Uh, we had no residential developers desire to build a single family home there. But we had 80 different businesses say, could we get this rezoned? Well, it wasn't just rezoning, you had to go through Envision too. So they went elsewhere. So uh, I'd like to ask for a passage of this so the city can see a better building there instead of what's there. And I think that it'll actually add to the neighborhood. Um, I know the other property owners on that road and none of those were actually interested in participating in this process. One rents his house out successfully. Uh, if you looked at a floodplain map, you see one of his house is in a floodplain, so they don't even know what they're gonna do. Um, so they're, they're actually not on board. Those could all change ownership, I understand. Mm -hmm. 
but we're not, I'm not seeing the creep for a long time, if there is one. But I thank you for your time tonight. All right. Thank you, Paul. Okay, is there a motion on this item? Motion to approve. Is that Jimmy? Second. <clears throat> That was your uh, Commissioner Orr? Yep. We have a motion to approve at a proper second. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, by roll call vote, Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Franks? Aye. Commissioner Harrison? Aye. Commissioner McLemore? Aye. Commissioner Orr? Aye. Alderman Peterson aye. and Chair Lindsay votes aye. Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> okay, item number six, consideration of ordinance 2021-05, an ordinance to rezone 233.66 acres from agricultural AG district and Civic Institutional CI District to planned PD 2.02 district for several properties located near the intersection of Hillsborough Road and Mac Hatcher Memorial Parkway. This is the Brownland Farm PUD subdivision. Turn it over for staff for a presentation. Thank you, Chair. Um, Envision Franklin places this development in both the conservation subdivision and the conservation design concepts. Conservation subdivision calls for the primary use to be single family residential um, and then, then supports secondary uses of multiplexes and duplexes. Additionally, there is a special consideration for this area of the city that also supports townhomes as a secondary use. Conservation design concepts do not support any residential uses and only support recreational uses that preserve the natural features of the area. This plan includes additional housing types that are not supported by Envision Franklin and also uh, shows development encroaching significantly into the conservation design concept. Because of these two factors, staff believes that the density they are proposing can only be achieved by a plan that is direct, in direct conflict with several components of Envision Franklin and therefore recommends disapproval. Um, this concludes my presentation and I'm available if you have any questions. Okay, thank you. So this item is open for public comment tonight. So if there is anyone that would like to speak to this item, um, please approach the lectern. <clears throat> Please give us your name and address and hold your comments to two minutes, please. Hey, good evening. My name is Dory Bowles and I'm the um, CEO and president of the Harpeth Conservancy. And I think we all know this is a very complex proposal. It's a very complicated area of the Harpeth, the floodplain and the floodway. It's one of the special areas of the Harpeth after it comes through Franklin where the waters spread out and slow down. And so that's why this is a complicated um, project to figure out what can be done here, and obviously something can be done here. Um, I just like, as an organization, we've worked really hard in reviewing this. We're obviously still interested in working with uh, the Andertons and the developer. We were out there last week. There's a lot of good ideas floating around, but we would like to support the staff's recommendation for denial for, this, really on the floodplain. Our organization does not speak to things like, you know, density and, and other things with the plain. We focus on floodplain and water quality. And really what I just want to um, emphasize for two, uh, one minute is the two key issues. One is safety. Because all of the roads in this area are covered by 100-year floodplain waters. Two areas of Hillsborough Road, the areas in front of Monticello, both sides of Mac Hatcher. So even though, and obviously the developer will do this and wants to do it, they're even going to go above and beyond and build in that area where the internal roads are above the floodplain waters base floor elevations for the structures, the houses, the problem is getting in and out during a 100-year floodplain event. And when, where that will be, and obviously safety for folks doing that. I actually provided a map, the latest FEMA maps with circles around those hot spots. There's nothing that the developer can do about them, or at least it's probably been too expensive to consider. So it's something, it's a constraint that we all have to figure out as a city about what's a good option for this area. 
Uh, the other point I'd like to focus in on a minute is that this is a very extensive alteration of the floodplain, extremely extensive. The staff provided that, you know, the purple shows the uh, part of the floodplain that will then be built. Now, granted, as uh, the developer has pointed out, this area is where the water's not so deep. This is a very wide and shallow floodplain. It slows the water down, but with this extensive development, we're gonna lose a lot of that. And that's very important to the neighbors and the developments downriver, is we wanna make sure that the river still maintains the ability to slow the water down. So thank you very much for your consideration. This is very complicated. I think there's something that can be done out there, but this one is just too extensive and they'll be able to come up with something else. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Any other public comments on this item? Again, Devin Phillips, 2056 Belmont Circle, Fieldstone Farms. So this was, uh, you know, the reason for me being out here tonight was the floodplain issue with the community, as well as density issues. Um, you know, to say that adding 480 more, you know, houses, residencies right there won't affect people downstream, such as Cottonwood or Monticello or Fieldstone, you know, the repercussions of doing such just seems so great that what as a resident who owns a house in those communities, you know, what recourse do we have after these developers have come through, changed the entire landscape, taken, you know, grass and soil that used to soak up water, add it back to the river slowly. You cover that with asphalt, all it has to do is run into sewers, which run into the Harpeth, which flood Cottonwood more, flood Fieldstone. Do we, you know, five years down the road, once everything's done, do we get, you know, some sort of compensation when the house that you bought wasn't mm -hmm. in a floodplain and all of a sudden, because of miscalculations, this, that, and the rest, we all of a sudden are seeing our houses flooded, values going down, things like that. So, I mean, I'm definitely in a disapproval of Brown Farms. Love for anybody to do what they'd like to with their property, but as far as the amount of people that it affects, it doesn't seem that the profit for the few outweighs the negative for the majority. So. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, sir. I'm Steve Kuhn. I live at 311 Monticello Road. I'm the past president of the Monticello Homeowner Association. I'm an elder at Christ Community Church for the past 15 years. And I'm currently the chairman of the Master Planning Committee and Building Committee for Christ Community Church. This proposal for redevelopment uh, of Brownland Farm is an excellent plan and by far the best proposal that we have seen for dealing with the elderly property in the 17 years I've lived in Franklin, in Monticello. This developer has gone out of their way and gone above and beyond uh, with both the Monticello residents and the church to make this development something that's an asset to both as well as the city of Franklin. Turning the elderly property into a park and community amenity is something they did not have to do, okay? They, they did that at the neighborhood suggestion and, and welcomed that opportunity. And that's a huge win for the entire community. Working with Christ Community to coordinate development of the 40 acres of park, more than three miles of greenway trails, a canoe launch, and expansion of the church community garden are all evidence of their interest in bettering the community. The mix of housing types is a huge plus as Christ Community strongly desires to be a community church. And this gives us a great way to bring the community to our church in a walkable fashion. <clears throat> so in conclusion, I strongly urge approval of this development plan. We cannot stop growth. And we are blessed to live in a community as desirable as Franklin. It's gonna happen. But we should responsibly manage it. And I believe this plan clearly does that. It's very rare to find a development team that so readily listens and collaborates with all neighbors on such a plan. If we let this opportunity slip away, I believe we will come to regret it down the road when far less attractive options are proposed. Let's continue to hold to our high standards, absolutely, and seek improvements if warranted. And finally, 
most of us live in surrounding neighborhoods that at one time were also undeveloped land, yet those developments and the families they are now home to have made Franklin what it is today. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey there, this is Chris Udy. I am a former planning commissioner uh, and I've actually been on that side of the table much more than I've been on this side of the table. It feels a little weird out here, but um, I am a uh, longtime resident of Franklin. I live in an, uh, uh, in an attached dwelling unit and I also uh, am a member of Christ Community Church. Um, and I am very simply in favor of this plan um, because of many things. One in particular is the, uh, I've seen a lot of plans in the years that I've uh, been on planning commission and just been, and just cared about uh, development. And uh, this is, I had the same reaction when I saw this. I said, wow, that's, I was expecting to see something I was scared about. And I was excited to see the, uh, the design, the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, layout of this plan that, that fit well within uh, this area of the city. The, uh, the, I think the biggest, ex the, the biggest thing to me is the, uh, the parkland. This opens up the river uh, even more. We see a lot of people using the river a lot more in Franklin, and this, is, uh, this developer is providing a public park along the riverfront. Uh, to provide more access to all the citizens of Franklin to the river, as well as another park across the street on land that was this pretty much vacant forever. Obviously, there's um, concern about the flood, flooding, and floodplain. And uh, and as a as an engineer, um, as a as a trained engineer, not a practicing engineer, I uh, I recognize this as a if we if nobody does anything to this land, if we leave it agriculture, agriculture, we're relying on the whims of nature. Uh, and the flood can do what it will. If we, uh, if we develop this land and we actively participate in the uh, management of the flood water or allow this developer to, then we have the opportunity to look at multiple uh, uh, scenarios and address the floodplain uh, in an active way. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, sir. My name is David Lawbaugh. Um, I live in the Monticello neighborhood at 206 Revere Lane in Franklin. And uh, like the other gentleman said, I'm a little, I'm kind of surprised to hear what I'm going to say tonight, too. Um, this is, a, as Ms. Bull said, this is a very complex issue with some very real problems that, that need to be addressed. And I first of all want to take the time to, to thank the Planning Commission and the BOMA as, as it comes into play for really taking these considerations seriously because they are very serious. I lived uh, in Monticello during the flood of 2010, and I saw exactly what the Harpeth can do firsthand. And I'm very concerned about this, sub about this project um, because the Harpeth continues to flood. Uh, it flooded this year in April, and it did almost as much flooding in our area as it did in 2010. So this is something that really needs to be considered very seriously, as well as population density how to get people in and out of there on a daily basis, as well as in an emergency situation, and uh, also how many people should be in there. This, these are all very con serious considerations, and I want to thank you all so much for taking these things seriously and looking at these. I believe that Kevin Estes, who, is, who I've talked to about this, uh, who's uh, representative of Mills River Properties, has taken these, uh, these concepts very seriously as well, too, and has tried to provide a plan that really makes for a good community. Um, I believe that uh, there is a possibility of this working. I don't know, obviously, I think the, the big thing I'm concerned with tonight is that it would appear that the staff recommendation will disapprove all of these resolutions, and then what will we have? I would like to see some more discussion on this because I think Kevin can work out something that will fit this plan and will be able to work into the community for the good of our residents now and the future residents who will live there. So I would really like to see some more discussion and some, uh, something uh, to carry on uh, with, with what's being said now. And uh, I hope that will be the case. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, David. <clears throat> Thank you, commissioners. My name is Owen Jones. I live at 105 Monticello Road. 
My home overlooks property known as Section 1 of Monticello, so it's very much uh, something I'm keenly interested in. I'm also a co-president of the Homeowners Association at Monticello, and it's in that, it's in that uh, uh, vein that I'm speaking with you tonight, representing the Homeowners Association. Over a year ago, Kevin Estes approached the Homeowners Association, asked us to consider a proposal that he was thinking about for Brownland Farm Development. It was the first we'd heard about it or seen it. And we had a lot of concerns ourselves. And then as we talked more in the neighborhood, more concerns about flooding, about traffic, and about how the property, uh, especially the northern part of that section one that is out of the floodplain would be developed. Over time, Kevin and his team have met with our neighborhood five times via Zoom, inviting open discussion, had multiple conversations with those of us on the board, and I believe has taken the steps needed to mitigate the concerns that the neighborhood had. So as I look at it now, I think the neighborhood that is proposed, the proposal of the development that is on the table, is one that's reasonable and importantly for Monticello, addresses section one in a way that helps us with two of our primary objectives as a homeowner association, to protect property values and to enhance community life. The park is a big thing that the neighborhood has wanted for a long time for that property, considering that it's part of a floodway. And for the time that I've lived in Monticello, there's been concern about what would be developed on the seven acres out of the floodplain, that it be kept residential and that it be in keeping with the rest of the neighborhood. And this proposal does both of those things. And uh, for that reason, our homeowners association voted to uh, mm -hmm. state our preference that you pass this neighborhood, this development. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Scott Black. I live at 117 Bromley Park Lane in uh, Fieldstone Farms. I've been a resident of Fieldstone for 22 years and wanted to speak out tonight. I don't want to repeat anything said earlier, except ditto to Mr. Kuhn, a little jealous of his uh, commute. Uh, I'd like to have a walkable commute as well. And I liked what he said about other people moving to that area and being able to walk to his church. Walkability is a great thing. And repeat real quickly what Mr. Udy said about engaging mm -hmm. in, in activating our riverfront. That's a great thing. But the last thing I want to point out is the amount of money we've already spent as a city in that area on infrastructure and road work is at least $100 million if you consider Hillsborough Road to the north, um, the expansion that we did at Hillsborough Road with Mac Hatcher. The, dens the density is not a problem with the infrastructure that we've placed there. So um, I, I hope you vote in support of this project. The design that they've put together is a very well thought out and considerate of the existing situation and would be a great addition to our neighborhood and our community. Thank you. Hello, I'm Brian Hayworth. I live at 3214 Calvin Court in Franklin. Um, I'm an elder at uh, Christ Community. Um, I'm no expert in building uh, construction, uh, but I've gotten to hear um, Steve and others that have worked with the developer and I just want to put my support uh, behind the project for a couple reasons um, that some have mentioned I can't speak to the floodplain I do I have heard that the developer has intense interest in working um, carefully around that issue but also I just want to speak again to not only the values added of the the parkland and the greenland that the developer has included in this but also affordable housing we all have seen where the prices are going on uh, housing around us and it's very hard to find affordable housing and the additional units that would be provided in that um, in that affordable range is a real need. So I just wanted to speak to that. Thank you all. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Melanie St. Amant. I live at 126 Old Liberty Pike. Um, we built our house in, it completed in 2014, knowing it was a floodplain. We did not live here in 2010 when it flooded but the home that was there was very tiny and apparently completely underwater. So I can say from experience, it is very expensive to build a foundation in a floodplain. This will not be affordable housing by any stretch. And on top of that, we did flood 
on March 27th and 28th. Fortunately, our house is built to withstand that, but we had two feet of disgusting water and a several thousand dollar insurance claim and multiple days of cleaning up after the flood. We were lucky that it didn't affect any sort of air conditioning units because, as I said, we are built to withstand a flood. However, we have neighbors that live down the street from us that were not that lucky. They lost HVAC systems. They lost all kinds of electrical equipment. We have people that lost thousands of dollars just in other things that flood insurance does not cover, which includes refrigerators. Seems like a basic necessity this day and age, but flood insurance won't, won't cover a refrigerator and everything's getting more expensive these days. So I'd also like to bring to your attention that the National Weather Service has an advanced hydrological predictor for the Harpeth River. It tells you when we should start seeing flooding in our area and it's wrong. I don't have the exact numbers. My husband had looked them up and I didn't bring them with me, unfortunately, but it was off by more than 10 feet on March 27th, 28th. We shouldn't have flooded then based on their predictions, but we did. I think more studies have to be done before any sort of high density development continues in any of this area. If any of you walked into historic downtown Franklin after that flood, you'd see the damage and the destruction that it can do. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Star Bedoy, and I live at 217 Greystone Drive in Fieldstone Farms. And I am opposed to, to this development because of its size and the flooding problem. When the developer's finished, he may be gone when the flooding comes. But when you move land, things will change. Strongly opposed on that basis. Secondly is the traffic. Yes, Mac Hatcher being extended will be a great help. But there's still Franklin High School and people that need to go down that road and right now the traffic is over the top. If you have over 400 units in there, everyone will have at least one car, maybe two, coming out onto Hillsboro Road and that will be a nightmare. Also, as a member of Christ Community Church that I love and respect all the decisions that have been made. Not everyone agreed with it. Um, I just really feel that this is a mistake. So I wanted mm -hmm. to say that. And thank you for especially the Planning Commission staff for holding the line. God bless you. We want to be good neighbors. And I think if that happens, we will not be good neighbors to all the people that travel on Hillsborough Road and those that may be flooded because of the change of the land. Thank you. Thanks. I'm Don Davis. I reside at 1035 Neilcrest Circle, but I spend most of my time at 1215 Hillsboro Road, which is Christ Community Church, because I'm employed there for the past 12 years as business administrator. So I wanted to make a few comments. Um, some have already been made. I just wanted to re-comment on the conciliatory, conciliatory nature of the developer. Um, there were a lot of concessions that we requested along the way, most of which were granted in the best interest, we thought, of the church, but also of the community and the city of Franklin. So we're very appreciative of that. I wanted to make a comment about the process. We first had a congregational meeting in March of 2020, well over a year ago to inform our congregation of the interest in the property. And um, since that time, before we went to vote, we had online forums because of COVID. We had on-site forums for those who were comfortable coming, distancing. And then we had, um, in the month of June, we had our final two forums previous to that with the developer, these two without. And then the 28th of June, we went to a congregational vote, which we needed a simple majority on, but we were able to secure two thirds so I wanted to speak in favor of the motion and let you know the process that the church went through and the, and the strong support we have from the church. And then finally, I'd, I would just say that selfishly, because my office is on the second floor and it overlooks Hillsborough Road, I, I would love to see that park across the street at 23 acres go from a vacant lot with a for sale sign on it to a beautiful park that blends well with that area. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Hello, 
Good evening. My name is Allie Wallace Adair. I'm a Monticello resident and I live at 118 Williamsburg Place. I have been a resident of Franklin for 38 years. I am here tonight to ask you to say no to items six, seven, and eight for the proposed Brownland Farm development. I ask that you follow the guidance of Envision Franklin as it relates to the preservation of floodplain and floodway. Envision Franklin specifically states in a cons conservation design concept, conservation of floodplain has an inherent long-term value. The preservation of floodplain has a direct public safety purpose and that helps to minimize property damage during a flood. In addition to that, multifamily homes as proposed are also in direct conflict with Envision Franklin for this area that is under the conservation subdivision design concept. As unnatural weather events seem to be more normal, flooding of March 21 as an example, it's important that we as a city are very intentional in decisions such as this. The last thing we as a city need to be responsible for is the safety of residents exiting this development in a flooding event, especially if it's high, high density. The risk we put our safety personnel, police, fire, and EMT in as well um, is extremely important, as well as those who live downstream and may be, take the brunt of a flood. As a Monticello continues to flip to young families, there's grave concern with the increased traffic Monticello will be impacted with and the inability for young children to play in the neighborhood without cars racing through from this development. It's great that there was an offer to add this additional speeding devices, but we, if we follow Envision Franklin, Monticello residents will not have as much of a headache. In closing, I'm aware that the unincorporated HOA of Monticello sent a letter of approval on behalf of the entire development. Please know that they don't speak for the whole development. There are multiple citizens that find there is no added value to the proposed development as is. We stand with staff's disapproval of six and seven. Please vote no to items six, seven, and eight this evening, and thank you for your time and the opportunity to talk. Thank you. Any other comments? Good evening, Ken Leggett, resident at 328 Stanley Park Lane, um, Franklin, 37069. One of the pastors at Christ Community Church I just want to speak in favor of this. Um, we're excited on three levels. Number one, our neighbors want this. And we've had really good neighbors, Monticello and Brownland Farms. This is their vision, Brownland Farms. This is their wish, their desire. And we'd love to see that happen. Um, secondly, Christ Community Church has voted overwhelmingly um, to sell a portion of their property to make this happen. Um, we exist in the community for the community. We've poured millions of dollars as a nonprofit back into the embetterment of our community and for the sake of our neighbors, and we will continue to do so over the years. We're most excited about this is this actually gives us real people as neighbors, um, and we cannot wait to see that happen. Lastly, as a resident and a family, mm -hmm. uh, my family is so excited about the trail access. We're excited about the green space, and we're excited about a beautiful new development in Franklin. So I would ask you to vote in favor of this. And thank you so much for your time and your investment. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Margaret Smith and I do not live in that property, but I have attended Christ Community for 30 years and it's very dear to me. And I am on the board of the Homeowners Association where I do live. And I will say that uh, we are dealing with some very serious water problems in our neighborhood. Some of our neighbors who have problems so severe that they cannot sell their houses without it them being corrected and fixed. And I'm sure that the builder, when he built this very nice subdivision, did not envision that this would happen, but it did happen, and we are not in a floodplain. I think the two, I think there's a reason why uh, Envision Franklin turned this down. Um, I think there's a lot more study that needs to be done. I'm concerned very much about the flooding that goes on and where is the water going to go. And also I'm concerned about the traffic because unless I'm wrong, I do not think you can widen Hillsborough Road any further. And I do not honestly know where the cars are going to go. It's, it's already so congested. So I'm not saying yes or no, I am just saying please, I think it needs more study and more thought because we as a homeowners association where I live are struggling with the amount of funds it's going to take to fix these water problems that have developed. 
I myself have spent $7,000 over the last year on my own property with water problems that developed as a result of decisions that the builder made. So that's, that's just my cautionary note that I am giving you all. I think this needs more time and thought and consideration. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Michael Smith. I'm a resident at 106 Poteet in Monticello subdivision. I'm actually here to speak on the next issue, but I felt compelled to come and mention something on this issue as far as a Brownland Farm because it's already been brought up. I would only want to point out that of the numerous people who have spoken for and against this proposal, the experts in Vision Franklin are clearly opposed to it, number one. Number two, of those who came here, and they're entitled to their opinion, but those who came here who were voicing their support of this, the majority of them are not residents of this neighborhood or this area. They are members and leaders of the Christ Community Church. They are not residents. And so their being affected or not affected is significantly different. So I think that has to be taken into account. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Hello, my name is Adam Sager. I reside at 3035 Heartland Lane in Franklin, Tennessee, and I am a member of Christ Community Church. I'm a civil engineer, and I'm actually the applicant for item eight, uh, so I may be presenting that as well. Uh, I am in favor of the development, but I just wanted to clarify something since I think I'm in a position to, uh, to speak on this matter, is that uh, I agree with everybody with the floodplain concerns. Um, I didn't live in Franklin at the time. I had uh, my crawl space flood in 2010. That was a very unusual flood. I hope that never happens again. Uh, but what I want to mention as a civil engineer who does do floodplain studies is that I support responsible floodplain management systems. And um, I'm not here to take away from anything that has happened in the past in floodplain or any flooding that has happened to any residents here. It is a real thing. And, uh, but if they have flooded in the past and we do nothing, it seems to me that it's just gonna continue to flood. Whenever a development comes along and has the opportunity to create additional floodplain storage, it seems to me that we would want to be responsible and engage the floodplain to make it a better place to store floodwaters so that we have less flooding in the future, not the status quo. So uh, I would ask Franklin staff to look at the floodplain studies and if they are creating additional floodplain storage above and beyond what is already there today, I, I think that that would probably be a, a plus for everybody that is um, concerned about floodplain and flooding in the past. And I think the only entity that could come in and do it is a development of big enough size to be able to create that floodplain storage. So just wanted to, to bring that to your attention because um, I do care a lot about the floodplain as well uh, as I uh, design on it quite a bit. So thank you. Thank you, Adam. <clears throat> Other comments? Is it all right to get another minute? No. <laughs> I was allowed two minutes. Not on this. You've spoke. You've had a chance to, to speak to this group. Is there well, anyone else that hasn't had a chance to speak that would like so to speak? So what I was thinking is the only people that I've seen that are for this are members of the community church, okay. which I haven't seen their financials, and it okay. would probably okay. profit them to have that. But I also didn't realize that the Brownland Farms had enough floodplain storage area built in that it wouldn't affect people downstream. Okay. As to say, as well as retired people who, I lived in LA for two years and you got your <laughs> earthquake insurance, unfortunately I lived in LA, you got your earthquake insurance from the state because insurance companies know that they're not gonna give you insurance anymore. So when okay. these areas <clears throat> do end up becoming flooded and those people retired, maybe on social security, on a fixed income, can't afford the insurance that's not given to them and their house floods, then they're just out. No home, no nothing. 
no insurance. So is the Great. city going to provide? Thank you for all of your comments. Thank you. Oh, thank you're you. welcome. Yes, sir. My name is Rob Anderton. I live at 1155 Hillsborough Road. Uh, 2010, yeah, my farm did flood, um, but it didn't flood like some of these people assumed that it did. And here in March, uh, my farm didn't flood like a lot of these people's properties say they did. Um, this concept plan that these people put together, um, I am in obviously for it. Um, I'm not against it. They're not trying to push me out. Um, I would hope that you would be in support of it. Um, it is a good plan. Um, something's going to happen someday, and this one's probably the, uh, uh, the best that it could possibly be. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, seeing no other, no other comments, I will declare the public hearing portion of this meeting closed. Um, we'll turn it over to a presentation by the applicant. Thank you. Hi, my name is Greg Gamble, representing the applicant, Miles River Partners. And uh, Chairman Lindsay, this rezoning request is so closely tied to the development plan. Would you mind if we did our presentation really for both at the same time? Would that be appropriate? That's the next item on the list. Yes, sir. Yeah, go we ahead. Can, we can combine sure. them together. Sure. Um, that would be great. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to take you back to um, 2019 <coughs> when we had paper. <laughs> I know you've all become so accustomed to computers and Zoom. Uh, we have a handout for you tonight <clears throat> that is on paper, a little bit easier to see, uh, softer on the eyes. Um, and uh, if you wouldn't mind turning to page two, this is the previous master plan that we discussed at the Joint Conceptual Workshop. Uh, at the Joint Conceptual Workshop, we heard several comments from you. One comment is that this development should be lighter on the land. Um, it should have a smaller footprint. Um, it should have less manipulation of the floodplain and develop less floodplain area. <coughs> We have reduced the total development footprint from 93 acres to 75 acres. We have reduced the amount of floodplain impact from 55 acres to 37 acres. We have an average floodplain fill of 2.6 acres. On the next page, we have our current proposed master plan. This is 471 homes um, on a total of um, 233 acres. It does include 49 acres of Christ Community Church. Um, on the next page here, you'll see the portion that's being purchased from Christ Community Church. Uh, this is revised from the Joint Conceptual Workshop, so it's a little bit different shape than we had. But what you do see is that our Brownland Entrance Road is aligning with Monticello Road. Um, on the next page here, you see an aerial photograph of the church. Sorry, I'm walking you through this quickly so that we can uh, move right along. We would like to spend the most of the time tonight here talking about the floodplain. But we're going to be removing the parking lot that is shown here to the left or the south um, of church parking lot, uh, relocating it to the west uh, behind the church. It is at the same, pretty much the same elevation as the main uh, access to the church. So a lot of the church members won't have to be walking up a, a tall hill uh, to get to church every day. It's more convenient for them. But it allows us to have our Brownland Entrance Road aligned directly with Monticello Road. And that will be a new signalized intersection. We have... Um, a total of, I'm looking on the, the next page then, looking at the back to the master plan. We have um, a total of 471 homes. 206 of those are single family detached homes. Um, all of the homes that you're seeing as a part of our development plan are for sale. We um, had several questions through our public neighborhood meetings asking us if we still had affordable housing as a part of our plan. It was removed. Because the development area and the development foot, put, footprint was smaller, we had to remove the affordable components. With the development plan that you're reviewing tonight, we have added back in 64 multifamily condominium units that are in three buildings that are located directly behind the big houses that are four unit buildings facing um, Hillsborough Road. 
we do plan to continue those conversations with the Community Housing Partnership. Those condominium units are our smallest. We would like for those to be the more attainable units and homes within this development. We would like for um, this community to be a mixed income neighborhood, a true mixed income neighborhood, um, a neighborhood that would accommodate seniors who want less maintenance. Um, the big house buildings with four unit condominium buildings typically do not have elevators. Our com proposed three condominium buildings will. You'll notice on the uh, next page here, the area shown in red is the current Brownland Equestrian Facility. It's used in it, the entirety of this red area. Um, the previously proposed development footprint was shown here in this dashed yellow, and then the green line shows the, uh, the current footprint. And so um, we believe that we are listening to you, we are responding, we are making the development footprint smaller and uh, responding to that. On the next page, we have photographs of Brownland Farm uh, during one of its normal horse events. Um, it has um, one show, or uh, 12 shows per year. Uh, there are about 2,500 visitors that attend. Um, it is, um, it basically becomes a parking lot for trailers and cars uh, during the event for the, the horse shows. Um, we believe while there are certain aspects of the farm that are very special and we want to protect and we want to uh, reintroduce as a part of the landscape, um, that there are also things here that were done that we can leave better. As um, stewards of the land, we have a responsibility in development to leave things better than the way we found it. Um, on the next page here, we have um, the start of our floodplain uh, presentation that we'd like to give to you today. Um, I'm joined tonight by uh, Ben Zoller. Um, ben is with Barge Design, and he's going to present uh, the next few slides. Uh, also here tonight with us um, is Kevin Estes with Miles Rivers Partners, who's uh, part of the developer and uh, Steve Casey, who is with CEC, but was our third party analyst for the, the flood study that Ben is gonna to present to you now. Thanks, Greg. Um, as Greg said, my name is Ben Zeller. I'm with Barge Design Solutions, a water resources engineer. And we've been performing the flood study out at, um, for the Brownland development. Um, it's currently under the third party review, just kind of wrapping up. Um, with Steve Casey. So I'm going to talk today about the existing conditions um, flood study um, and then I'm going to go on to talk about the improvements we're going to be making to the floodplain um, on the western um, part of the Brownland Farms property, talk about how those improvements impact flood elevations across the property and then um, <clears throat> close out from there. So on this uh, river conservation and stewardship sheet, and you can see the map here um, that Matt's holding up. If you look on the right side of this map, you see these arrows, the pink and blue and white arrows. And what those arrows are showing are the, uh, the, fl the flow paths for the Harpeth River system in this area. Um, the flow splits in three separate directions. You have the Harpeth River and its floodplain conveying 76% of the total flow of the system. You have the east split going through Monticello conveying 19% of the total system. And then the west split, which moves across the Brownland property and uh, by the church, which conveys 5% of the system. Um, what I want to point out here is the west split and the east split aren't streams. They're not streams that you'll walk out and see the you know, there's water flowing down them on a regular day. What happens is when the flood storage of the Harpeth River meets its capacity and starts getting out of its banks in this area, the, uh, the Harpeth River floods will short circuit the floodplain and travel down the west and east splits. Um, but it really is involved with flood storage downstream on the Brownland property. So that being said, I'm going to start talking about the existing conditions at the Brownland property. You'll see these red 
polygons here and red lines on this map. And what that's highlighting is um, impediments or obstructions to flow in that overbank. Um, on the northern part of, on, on that northern bend of the Harpeth River towards the top of your um, image there, there's a large berm, and that's been stockpiled material, fill pa placed in the floodway over the last however many years that the farm has been operating. And then you look on the south side of the property, and you'll see additional stockpiles. And these are 25, 30 foot tall stockpiles of material covering you know, 150, 200 foot by 150, 200 foot large areas right along the floodway and junkyards um, with, with cars that have been sitting there and vehicles that have been sitting there. And kind of my point is, this isn't pristine floodplain that we're talking about conserving right here. It's, it's developed, but it's developed in, as a horse farm. Um, when you look in the middle of the site here, um, you'll see large buildings um, and the, the lines are fence lines. And what happens as the um, flood is conveyed through this area is it's obstructed by these, these impediments along the floodplain. Um, Commissioner, because we're combining this presentation but for this item and the next item, may we extend our yeah, just five minutes? Yeah, go ahead a few more minutes, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So, I'll move on. Now we're gonna look at the, what you guys are looking at there are close up pictures of kind of the impediments that I'm talking about. The large hill in the floodway, the, uh, the, the muck stall discard, um, which also presents kind of a, uh, a pollutant type issue. And then you can see the, some of the cars from the from the, uh, the yard there on the south side of the site. So then I'm gonna move on here to the proposed, the proposed design. Um, and so number one, we'll, we'll, we'll be removing the impediments and those obstructions from the floodplain and floodway. So the flood can efficiently convey across the Brownland property. Secondly, we'll be adding flood storage to the northern bend and the southern bend of the Harpeth River. Mm -hmm. And what that's gonna do is increase that flood storage capacity. And with that increased flood storage capacity, you can see on the right-hand side of, your, of, the, uh, of the image here that 82% of the total flow of the Harpeth River will be moving down the Harpeth River and its floodplain, and 18% will be moving across the east split. Um, that means there's a slight reduction in flow on the east split under this condition, slightly reducing water surface elevations and velocities are about the same on the east split. So in the interest of time, I'll skip ahead here um, to the final image. And th what this does is show the change in 100 year base flood elevations along the property. And what you'll see is that the elevations tend to go down, not by a lot, but by a maximum of four inches on the south side. So these floodplain improvements by letting flow convey unimpeded across the floodplain and the additional flood storage in those bends will not just achieve a no rise, but it will actually slightly reduce flood elevations on the south side and west side of, of Brownland. Let me see that page for a second. Um, I'm moving fast, Emily, I promise. If you will look back uh, one page um, <coughs> to the cross sections here, uh, just wanted to point out this is a cross section that's taken through the southern bend. And you can see the impediments that are, are shown here and the existing grades. Um, on the lower section here, we're removing those impediments. We're creating the fishing pond and the park. And you can see here the additional storage. We thought providing that cross section through that southern area and showing how we're, we're lowering this ground just slightly 
uh, provides that additional storage and allows the flood water to cross over the southern area unimpeded. Um, it does not do that today. Um, lastly, and this is the last point, um, we have provided with, to you as well um, an architectural page in the back. This is the architecture that's provided as a part of the development plan. And on the left side here, we have townhomes. These townhomes are currently supported in Envision Franklin uh, design concepts. And then we have a photograph here of a two and a half story condominium building for 16 units. And what I want to show is the similarity and the compatibility that this building has with the townhomes. The 16 unit building that we're showing here is surface parked behind, so there are no garages that are in this one. We would like to add garages uh, as a part of our condominium buildings. Um, and uh, believe that there is compatibility with this architectural style based upon the master plan that we've designed, the location of the condominiums, and uh, we look for your support. Uh, happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Okay, is there a motion on this item? I have a motion to approve. Second. This Michael, you may go. Technically, to recommend to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen, correct? <clears throat> That's correct. Recommend to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. Is there any discussion? Yes, I'd like to yes, ask I'll the applicant some questions. Yes, Is that okay. okay? Out of the 471 units, um, can you break down the different price points that you may have at this point? I know it's early in the stages, but we yeah, talk I'll about the affordable elements, so I want to hear what you're calling affordable and yes. what these different price points are. And, and affordable is a tricky word. A lot of times we use attainable in our, in our nature nowadays, but um, it doesn't matter. just because we see so much inflation every day today. Mm -hmm. But when we started this, we made a lot of commitments and we started at 800 units. Where we are today is we want to be able to provide condominiums that start in the twos in below fours. And in our opinion, that is what we can provide for working class members of Franklin to actually live here. I'm not gonna pretend like any of these single families will ever reach that affordable point. I would sit up here and be a bald faced liar if I did that. But in the condominiums, that's where we can do. And that was part of us pulling out of the floodplain and reducing our <clears throat> density and our footprint. And that's a promise we made to the church of Monticello and one we intend to keep. And this is the 64 units. 64 okay. units. What about the, the other units? Uh, what are the price points? What are, what we are have two dip different types of townhomes. We have an A and a B. The A's, we also believe in today's dollars, we start about 320 and end about 440. We believe the larger townhomes in today's dollars will start in the probably high threes and then the low fives. And we believe all the single families could start anywhere from the high fives and, and who knows where they end. Nowadays, 10 people want to buy every home. So I by no means can predict that one. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And, and, uh, Greg, what are the numbers on the school children and where would they go to school? Uh, it has not been determined where they would go to school if there was a redistricting that would take place yet, and that mm -hmm. probably would not occur until the uh, entitlement for Brownland was established. But mm -hmm. um, we do know that, um, um, sorry, Franklin High School uh, has a current um, occupancy of 86%. Um, and that the middle school and elementary schools um, within this area have occupancies less than, or around 70 to 75 percent. <clears throat> really? I thought they were overcrowded. <laughs> Not according to the school districts. Okay. Yeah, really. Thank you. Chairman, yes, two things. Uh, first of all, this, the plan includes housing types that are not uh, supported by Envision Franklin, so strike one. But the thing that really, I think, gets me is the the encroachment uh, 
into the con uh, conservation design concept. And, and I know there's been so much talk tonight about uh, floodway, floodplain, and all of that. Uh, my dad and I, we own a house that's, that's probably two, three miles down the way. And uh, the flood of 2010, you know, 100 year flood, da 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 da. da. And I rem I'll never forget when he pulled the, the uh, building permit, and we were so upset with the city at that time because he was made, he had to, he had to raise the foundation, I forget how many feet, it cost so many thousand dollars. This is back in 95. 96. Had to pay so many extra thousand dollars to do that. And we're like, oh, there's no way. We're so far away from the well, When the flood hit in 2010, we weren't affected at all by it, okay? I said all that to say, and I hear some people <clears> saying, well, you know, it wasn't so bad, da 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 da. And then turn right around and back to here a few months ago, flooding again. I say all that to say, regardless of whether uh, people that the, the houses that are, that are built here are affected by flood in the future or not. It is incumbent upon us, when we consider things like this, to plan for the worst, to take in consideration what we have right now, the best of our knowledge, to take in consideration what our professional staff and what our plans tell us now. Great plan, I know that. We have been through this, we have talked to these developers, they know where we're coming from, and I'm not at all doubting that with the church and all of that, but it is our jobs and it is what we are to do and what I feel to do the right thing to recommend to the board and mayor and alderman. I will not be able to support this at all. I won't based off of what staff has recommended, based off of what I feel is the best thing to do. I will not be able to support that. And I'm not here to debate this with you, Greg, or with anybody, or I'm not asking you any questions. I'm just saying based off of what, based off of that, based off of all the conversations we've had, I will not be able to support this. I will go along with staff recommendations on this. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner. Other comments? I, I also will not be able to support it because of the, from, from several things, but mainly con my concern about the floodplain. Okay. Other comments? I'm just glad to say it's not Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy. Poignant statement, Commissioner. Okay, I've got a couple of questions. Um, because this is a modification of a mapped floodway, this has to go through a FEMA approval process. So it starts off with a conditional letter of map revision based on fill, a clomer, as we call it in the industry. So describe, uh, Ben, if you will, that process of applying for a clomer. Sure, so a clomer, a conditional letter of map revision, is a submission of a flood study to FEMA for a proposed design. And FEMA will review that flood study and decide whether or not that proposed design will meet the National Flood Insurance Program requirements. Um, and so they'll review it, they'll ask questions, there'll be a review process back and forth between the, the uh, applicant and FEMA, and then eventually they may submit a CLOMER letter saying that if this project is constructed, per the design, then it will meet the NFIP requirements, the National Flood Insurance Program requirements, at which point the project would be moving, you know, if the project actually gets constructed, there would be an as-built survey taking of the entire property and then verifying that, sure enough, it does meet the design. You would submit a letter of map revision at that point that would officially update the FEMA maps, and that's the point where, say, you know, West Split would be removed from the map at that point. And the, and the updated flood, flood plans would be. Uh, and the, the LOMER, the letter of map revision, is at the completion of, I don't know correct. how they would deal with phases of construction, but largely, I guess, when modifications are completed to, to the floodplain and. Yeah, you might go mm -hmm. Yeah, the, um, the uh, cut and fill would all be done in one phase, surveyed at once. Um, Clomars are not unusual in the city of Franklin. Um, we did a Clomar for Wood Duck Court condominiums. The city of Franklin is doing a Clomar right now for Southeast Park uh, for the grading and um, uh, uh, associated with the, uh, with the park. Um, with the proposed development of Brownland, we're gonna be adding 26 million gallons more storage capacity 
for the river in this bend. It's a significant amount of additional capacity. That's what we talk about when we say leaving the site better than we found it today. So what's the time frame on the clomer? Because it, it, as I understand it, you can address this, but, but until you get a clomer approved by FEMA, then this project doesn't move forward. You're exactly right. We're yes. talking six to 12 months at a minimum. Yeah, that's a good estimate. Before anything happens. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. And if FEMA, and, and it also relies on the city signing a community acknowledgement form mm -hmm. that says that they, that there's reason to believe that, that there's, uh, what's the term, what's the terminology been? It's uh, reasonably safe from flooding. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, that's an action required of the city as part of the process of submitting the clomer. That's correct. And then FEMA's got to agree to it because in the discussion that I participated in earlier this week, there were still three rises showing in the, in the model as it works its way around the river. So it doesn't meet the requirement for no rise because there's still three rises. And so that's one of the things that kind of bothers me a little bit is that if you're, if you're modeling this in the process of designing this, uh, that at some point um, you look and say, is there a way we can make all this design happen without creating these rises, which, right. which are very potential stumbling blocks with, with the FEMA process. I mean, we could get 12 months down the road and FEMA kick this back and say, we don't agree with this. Uh, and then you're back to square one and we've processed all these rezonings and development plans mm -hmm. for a project that can't move forward. And, that, and that's why I wonder, and I, I, I'm, I'm talking toward you, Ben. Yeah, not, I understand. Not asking you questions, but my concern is that we're taking a lot of fairly concrete steps here tonight relative to rezoning and development and to something that for 12 months we won't even know if it'll even move forward. So that's, that's a concern that I've got with this, with the whole process. So is there anything else relative to clomers and lomers that Ben, that you want to add to that? Or? Uh, one thing I will mention, you're, that those three, like the rises are you know, less than a tenth of an inch, or le less than a tenth of an inch, or about a tenth of an inch, very, right. very minor, very minor rises that obviously we'll work on shaking out, you know, and working out um, through the design process. Um, and that, so I would mention that. I, or, I know the, the call you were talking about earlier right. this week. So, yeah. Chairman Lindsay, I have one. I'm sorry. Chairman Lindsay, I'm sorry. This is Marcia. Yes, Marcia. you just brought up a point for me that I'd like to for our legal counsel. So, does the city have to sign that clomer and say that they don't that we don't believe that there'll be a flood? Who who's going to sign that? Or does the city is the city obligated if we approve this <clears throat> to sign that clomer to say that? Does the city engineer have to say that? Do they are they obligated to say that? It's a requirement for the for the processing of the clomer. It has to be signed by the city. I, I signed those on behalf of the city of Nashville. But what so I'm saying. That's my, it's a charge that, that the, city, the city has to agree that what's being proposed is not going to be a, a, a conflict with the National Flood Insurance Program and the city's standing in the NFIP. But I'm saying that opinion, does, I mean, <clears throat> is the city, that opinion is independent, though. I mean, they, the city has to actually believe that is what well, I'm saying. Would, and, and it would be based on review of the model and the project. Right. So um, the floodplain administrator would be the one that signs those, and they'd obviously get sent over to engineering for review as well. Right. Until it's signed, it does not get sent to FEMA. They won't accept it without that. Okay, signature. so that's independent of us is all so I'm saying. Two, okay, two steps, that's two all I'm steps. asking. So that could be the oh, and, mm -hmm. and, and I just want to make clear, we're well aware of the Clomar and the time and how long we went. We entered in this two years ago and I'm not going to even tell you how much money has been spent on this. Don't, that's irrelevant, but and that's part of the reason we, at the city's request, hired a third party reviewer for this. I believe he's provided a letter to this, all the commissioners tonight. So we're very well aware of all the process and we have patience. We believe in this project that much, but we do know that this is no guarantee from FEMA, but this is the process the city set out. This is what we have to follow. We're not we're not jumping ahead. This is the process we have to follow. We have to go through this just to get to FEMA. So we're coming along the process as we're supposed to. So 
Uh, so we'll, but yes, thank you. But we are well aware okay. of the time frame that's in front of us on this. <clears throat> well, that that it still remains um, some part of my concern, I guess, with respect to this overall project. One is that we are we are taking steps tonight to recommend a rezone and, and development without the, the sense of the you know another year just to sit and wait for this cloma to be processed. Um, the fact that it involves filling a floodway, I think, is still a significant component of this. I'm also I'm also bothered by the fact that that this is again it's it's it, it's inconsistent with the with the the approved envision Franklin plan and that's that's you know every every major project that comes in here comes in with with you know requests to modify envision Franklin and and every new single family neighborhood comes in with a 500 unit apartment complex stacked on the front of it and and you know these are are things that just they just never seem to to stop or to slow down, and, and those those are kind of you know aside from the filling in the floodway and the, uh, and and just to, to point of reference, the the flood that we had on March 27th and 28th flooded a number of homes. Uh, to a lady that lives on Old Liberty Pike, I, I, I sympathize with you. Uh, you weren't the only one that flooded on Old Liberty Pike. There were three brand new homes down there that had two or three feet of water in their ba in their garages. Uh, I, I drove down there to look. I, I'm a flood nut, so when there's a flood, I drive around and look, and I take pictures. And I took a lot of pictures on March the 28th or 9th. And uh, the flood that we had on March the 27th and 28th was a 10-year flood event, a 10-year event, which was six or eight feet short of the 50-year event that was measured on the lower reach of the Harpeth in 2010. That was not a 100-year flood event. And the bulk of the flow through these floodways comes at a 100-year event. Um, so we've had two lesser floods, mm -hmm. um, and yet they still are, are significant. I drove up to Ewingville, and there's, again, the same, the same victims in Ewingville had water lapping at their thresholds on a 10-year event. And, and we have, in Middle Tennessee, experienced every 8 to 12 months for the last three or four years we have experienced an eight to 10 inch rain event. The most recent one prior to March the 27th was in September of, of 2020, last fall, where it rained nine inches of rain in the Mill Creek Basin and flooded a, a bunch of homes in the Antioch area. And, and prior to that, the most rainy March on record happened in 2019. And so I, I just want to drive home the fact that we haven't seen the monster yet here. Mm -hmm. Bellevue had eight feet of water above the 100-year flood elevation in 2010. That was probably a 5,000-year event. Mm -hmm. but most of that rain fell below mm -hmm. the heart of downtown Franklin. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, we don't need eight feet of water above the base flood elevation because all these new homes in Brownland and everywhere else will have four feet of water in them. Mm -hmm. So. It, it's happening with a, a greater and greater frequency. Um, and so I think that when we start manipulating floodways, um, that there's reason to be um, concerned. So I'm, I'm, I, I think there's so much, but there is a, there is a wonderful development that, that can go on the Brownland Farms area, but it has to be done right. And, and I don't think we're there yet. So that's, that's my position and, and I, I can't support recommendations tonight either. So, Chairman. Yes, sir. Will they have a chance, uh, though, or will that be determined and proven uh, that uh, this amount of units cannot go there? Um, subsequently, us approving this tonight, will they? That will come forth, correct? As far as uh, how many units can go there, how 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 much of the floodplain can be impacted, how much. How much of the uh, high ground they'll end up with? Um, we obviously see the neighbors in the Monticello Neighborhood Association supporting this. We see the church supporting this. Uh, they trust the the professionals that are designing this. But with this pass tonight, uh, there's several more milestones they have to accomplish, like you said, and. Uh, is there a reason why we can't pass this then? That 
is clear that um, this will go forward? Yeah. I mean, does that really mean it's going to go I, forward? Well, I don't, I'm not, I can't really speak to that. Emily, do you want to? I, so tonight we have the rezoning, which grants entitlements, the number of units that can go on the property. This is a recommendation to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. So while it's not final tonight, when it is approved or not approved by the board, those entitlements will be granted or, or not. Um, but so th this is the time where those number of units are, are discussed and are either approved or disapproved. The development plan that accompanies this um, shows you the layout of how those should be, how the, the applicant is proposing that those be arranged on the site. So again, the, this is actually a request at this time for those units and how they lay out on the site. The applicant could revise the plan in the future, but the the zoning would potentially be granted if approved by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. I think what I we're have, I missed it. Oh, go ahead. does it just to follow up with Emily, does so is there is there a specific action that we have to take to 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 um, uh, amend the envision Fr uh, Franklin plan? No, so um, there's not the back in. I don't remember the exact date, it's in your staff report, but there was a request to, by the applicant at that, at that point to amend Envision Franklin to allow multifamily units at the time, and that request was pulled by the applicant. Um, at the resubmittal date um, with, of the development plan, there were some multifamily buildings added to the plan. Um, but at that juncture, this was already going through the process, and that is part of the rationale for staff recommendation of disapproval. Mm -hmm. But it can still, the, the Board of Mayor and Aldermen and the Planning Commission can still act on this development plan, even though it doesn't match Envision Franklin. But that is part of the rationale for the staff recommendation right. of disapproval. I have a question. Did that answer your question, Commissioner? Oh, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Okay. So, yes, so if the city agrees and sends a letter to FEMA, so FEMA does, has to approve the entire development, um, the cutting and filling, the grading, <clears throat> the number of units, every bit of that, they have to sign off on all of it. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Okay, yeah, well, I will support sending it to BOMA based on that fact because if they have to sign off on it, I'm sure they're the experts and they can... If, if, if it's not going to work, they'll let us know. Thank you. But but just for clarification, Emily, that so the entitlements will be granted by right. by the rezoning. Um, Correct. Whether whether FEMA agrees or not, right? There'll still be an entitlement to right. those numbers of units. So. That's correct. And you got to figure out so where to put them. So the applicant may have to submit a revision to the development plan in the future. If, um, and Jimmy could speak to this, I'm sure, probably yeah, I'm, better I'm than I can. I'm happy to jump in. If, for whatever reason, the, the CLOMAR is not approved, uh, then this development plan does not, would not be built as shown, and but potentially units would be lost. Because typically what happens with the final submittal that goes to FEMA is you do your field run survey and a very detailed um, layout of the grading. And at the development plan level, we're kind of zoomed out, so we don't really have all that in front of us right now. They've done a lot more work than most development plans do, but this is also a very unique situation with unique impacts to the floodway and floodplain. So generally speaking, the F if FEMA does not, if the <coughs> hydrologic study doesn't get approved, then the development changes dramatically after that and would have to come back in for a revision. Right, you would see the board. revised development plan at that point. And I, I don't think any of us in this room could tell you if it's going to be for the same number of units or, or not. That's up to the applicant and at that point in time. So I think that we can't really speculate about that, but it would have to come back most likely through this process. Other comments? <clears throat> Seeing none by roll call vote. Commissioner Allen? No. Commissioner Franks? Yes. Commissioner Harrison? No. Commissioner McLemore? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Orr? Yes. 
Uh, Alderman Peterson? No. And chair votes no. So the motion fails <clears throat> by a vote of four to three. <clears throat> Okay, Councillor. <clears throat> so item seven now is a resolution for the development plan for this. Right, but your motion was just to recommend, so you're recommending disapproval. Right, so they're still going to do that. Okay. For number six. For number six. Right. So number so seven. You still have to open on number seven. Okay, item number seven consideration of resolution 2021 53, a resolution approving a development plan for Brownland Farm. PUD subdivision for several properties located near the intersection of Hillsborough Road and Mackatcher Memorial Parkway. Uh, staff presentation. Thank you, Chair. Um, the Brownlin Farm Development Plan proposes a mix of housing options across a grid of street network um, and provides a variety of open spaces that are easily accessible to the proposed residents of the development. On another site and a different design concept, staff would most likely support this development. However, staff cannot support the plan as shown because several key components of the plan are not consistent with the city's long range plan in Vision Franklin. First, the plan proposes development in approximately 52 acres of land currently within the floodplain. Staff has attached an exhibit to this staff report to highlight the areas of the plan where development is proposed within the current limits of the floodplain. These areas coincide with the conservation design concept of Envision Franklin. The conservation design concept specifically states that conservation of floodplains has an inerrant long-term value and that the preservation of floodplains has a direct public safety purpose and helps to minimize property damage during periods of flooding. Disruption in any conservation area should be limited to preserve the function, form, and character of the area. Conservation of floodplain is not a new concept in our long-range land use plans. Envision Franklin merely highlights its, um, it in a more consistent way. While it can be pointed out that we have previously allowed manipulation of the floodplain with past residential developments, staff heard loud and clear during our land use plan update that conserving our floodplain areas was of extreme importance to our citizens and elected and appointed officials. Therefore, staff stands behind Envision Franklin and cannot support any development within the current limits of the floodplain. Additionally, the plan includes three multifamily family buildings averaging 21 units per building, which are in direct conflict to the uses supported in Envision Franklin for this area under the conservation subdivision design concept. In fact, the applicant had previously applied for an amendment, which Emily mentioned earlier, to envision Franklin to change the design concept to multifamily residential, but ultimately withdrew this application prior to the Planning Commission vote. They have had many neighborhood meetings about this property, but the last neighborhood meeting did not show multifamily on the site. This was added at resubmittal. Currently, the only housing type along the stretch of Hillsborough Road between the Harpeth River and Ander Anderson Creek, just south of Fieldstone Parkway, are single family residential homes. The only exception to this building type along the stretch of Hillsborough Road is Christ Community Church. During the adoption of Envision Franklin, it was contemplated whether can additional building types and densities were appropriate in these areas. It was determined that additional housing types could not be supported, but in smaller scale and by retaining the character of single family homes. Higher intensity uses such as multifamily and commercial were best concentrated at nodes of the major intersection of Hillsborough Road and Mack Hatcher and Hillsborough Road and Fieldstone Parkway. Staff supports only the smaller scale housing types of townhomes and multiplexes, a max of four units per building on this site, but not multifamily buildings like those proposed. To summarize, staff is recommending disapproval of this plan, not because of its layout or design, but because of its direct com conflict with multiple sections of Envision Franklin. This concludes my presentation and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. So we can open the meeting now for public comment. If anyone like, would, from the public would like to speak to this item, <clears throat> please approach the lectern.
We are still speaking on item number seven. Item number seven, yes. All right. uh -huh. I'm not sure where item number seven falls as a result of item number six, but I'm here uh, to announce. Uh, my name is Michael Smith. My wife and I, Laura Smith, live at 106 Petite Place in the Monticello subdivision. I'm here today because I agree with the Franklin Planning Division staff in their recommendation that you deny the changes proposed in Resolution 2021-53. We are opposed to building in or altering the floodplain and to the proposed changes to Envision Franklin. I'd suggest interest or time that you also review uh, our emails to the uh, board members June 17th and June 19th, which set forth more of our concerns in detail. In those emails, my wife and I sent you, as well as in their responses, uh, we asked that you give the Monticello Homeowners Association a letter that it is, quote, in favor of the proposal, the appropriate weight. Our issue is that for the board to represent that the entire Homeowners Association or the entire set of residents of Monticello are in favor of the proposal is inaccurate and misleading. The assertion that the association favors the proposal was based upon the perception of comments made during poorly attended informational meetings and a total lack of direct response to the board's request for further comment. Monticello has approximately 140 homes. Uh, what their responses were numbered in the teens. Uh, to say that the entire neighborhood is in favor of the proposal is simply inaccurate as would a statement that the whole neighborhood is opposed. So we're not saying that the entire neighborhood is or is not. There's obviously a division. You've heard that before. I would point out that the only actual survey or poll that the Homeowners Association uh, took, it was last year, but it's quoted um, the question of June 25, <clears throat> and that's set forth in my emails, but I can tell you the vote was, uh, are you in favor of acquiring the 70, the seven acres of Monticello section and developing it as multifamily, okay. single family residential. Can you wrap up your comments, please, sir? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Owen Jones. I live at 105 Monticello Road. I'm co-president of the Monticello Homeowners Association. I wrote the letter to which the person before me, Mr. Smith, just spoke of. It does not indicate, nor does it imply, nor is it intended to say that everybody in the neighborhood was in favor of this uh, proposal. What it, I did say and what it intended was that the board had voted and approved of the proposal the way that it is now. The poll he refers to was a year ago, which at the time, there were the uh, number of homes was in the seven or eight hundreds, as opposed to the 471-ish that it is now. So it's a totally different circumstance. And I do agree with one thing that he said, which is that the community meetings that we had, I wish that we had had 70, 80, or 100 out of the 150 homes represented in those meetings. There mm -hmm. weren't, however, the opportunity was there because I personally walked around to every home and posted for every single meeting or it got sent through U.S. mail so that people would be aware of it. So I would say that it was definitely um, representative of the people who were interested, came to those meetings, spoke into the process, and it was on you know, um, coming out of those meetings that the board made its decision, not a poll that was over a year old. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? My name is still David Lobaugh. I still live at 206 Revere Lane. And I'm going to speak now because I'm the other co-president of the Monticello Homeowners Association. I spoke before because I wanted to speak for myself. But I would just like to address some of these things. Um, there seems to be an idea that we have somehow intentionally misrepresented our neighborhood and that was never the case we tried <clears throat> excuse me we tried everything we could to promote as much participation in the neighborhood <coughs> that we could 
And I think that probably everybody here has been involved with the Homeowners Association at one time or another and realizes that there is a certain amount of apathy in all homeowners associations. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that people understood that we really tried to get more participation for this. We hope for more. And I sent a letter to the, to the, uh, to the Planning Commission and the Board of Mayor and Alderman where I said, we didn't really know that uh, knowing our lack of participation would really help you to decide anything. So we actually gave uh, our opinion or our favor uh, it, because of the uh, opinions that we were able to get. Okay. So we're not, we're not saying we represent the whole neighborhood. I don't know of any homeowners that, association okay. that could say that. Yeah, that's, yeah, I don't think that's really germane to our, the, 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 the completion of our deliberation. So I appreciate fine, your thank comments you. though. But I, I just want to also you. say, since I have a little time left, that I really appreciate the-, the uh, Ring the bell down there. Uh, I just want to say I really appreciate the, the discussion that we've had here tonight. I really appreciate you all taking the time to do this. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Other comments from the public? <clears throat> Y'all need to have a barbecue and get your neighborhood together and have, <laughs> have this discussion together. <laughs> okay. All right. That, I'm going to call an end to the public uh, comment portion of our meeting, too. So we're open now for a presentation by applicant, but I think we've seen a lot of the development plan uh, already, so go yes. ahead, Kevin. I'll be very quick. I'm Kevin Estes, 5074 Lakeview Drive. I am the applicant. I just want to um, first thank the commission and thank the staff, and as we head on to the BOMO, we thank everyone's efforts. I want to make clear, we've worked at this for two years. We came to staff asking mm -hmm. for a land plan amendment to avoid all this floodplain and floodway and all this other stuff and and I believe in the vision Franklin but staff said hey there's no chance of changing the vision Franklin mm -hmm. we didn't come down here willy-nilly we didn't sit here and try to push our way we've met with this community we've had over a hundred residents of Monticello on a zoom call at one time um, we've spoke we've had meetings on site for Monticello Cottonwood Fieldstone Farms Christ Community Church so we've arrived at this plan not over hey this is what we're going to do and shove it down people's throats we've worked with this community for well over a year through covid and probably closer to 15 months and we introduced this to staff two years ago so we are appreciative of everyone's input we're appreciative of the staff like i said we thank everyone for the work they've performed but i don't want it misrepresented that we've come in here and have ignored everyone we've gone down the path that only direction we've been given to go down and then um and i still stay confused on the whole floodplain stuff because we are doing exactly as the park is across from lachlan we are manipulating the floodplain and doing a clomer but once again we respect you and thank you and thank you for your time and your service thank you kevin okay <coughs> is there a motion on this item <coughs> move for disapproval Ms. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Is there a second? Second. Where'd that come from, Ann? Recommend disapproval to Rec the Well, recommend your board of mayor model. It does a lot saying, basically. Recommend disapproval? Yes. So we have a proper motion and a second for a motion for disapproval of this item. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Before we vote, now on the screen, where's it? Because the resolution that's brought up on our screen is consideration of res resolution. It's not for disapproval. I want to make sure before we vote here, where is Oh, I see. Oh. If you recommend to so the mayor, I'm, I'm going to do an I here. Right. Which is, so you correct. Okay. It will be. It will be sure in favor of your okay. of my recommendation. Motion, make yeah. sure because yeah. the way it's worded. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm good. So an I, an I represents agreement yeah, I, with to the dis, motion to, to dis deny. Disapproval to my. Yeah. It's for my. Yeah. It's for my motion. Okay. Right. Any other discussion? Sorry, I, I just think they they should have the right to go to Boma. <clears throat> this will go to Boma. It's going to Boma. Okay. It's just it's, it's going, going to Boma. Boma. It is. Yeah. 
Okay, by roll call vote, uh, Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Franks? No. Commissioner Harrison? Aye. Commissioner McLemore? No. Commissioner Orr? No. Uh, Alderman Peterson? Aye. And Chair Lindsay votes aye as well. So the motion passes four to three. Okay, item number eight, consideration of resolution 2021-54, a resolution approving a revised development plan for Christ Community Church for the property located west of Hillsborough Road and south of the Harpeth River at 1215 Hillsborough Road. Um, staff presentation. Thank you, Chair. Um, this um, resolution is, um, is, is with the last two. Um, it is, uh, the purpose of the development plan revision is to update the PUD to coincide with a potential land sale of a portion of the property. The layout has been revised so that the plan still meets the required parking and stormwater infrastructure needed. Um, no major changes are being made to the future uh, structures and the use will continue to be a church which is permitted in the base zoning district of civic institutional and supported by envision franklin this concludes my presentation and i'm available if you okay. have any questions thank you um, public comment if anyone would like would like to speak to this item please approach the lectern <clears throat> Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing portion of this meeting. Um, presentation by the applicant. Thank you, Adam Sager with Dale and Associates, 516 Heather Place. I am the civil engineer for uh, acting on behalf of Christ Community Church. Uh, like staff said, this is related to the previous two items in a sense that if the previous two items move forward, a land sale would happen and the church is then revising their PUD plan to coincide with the new property line. So that's what this is, is uh, it, that's how it's kind of tied. So we just kind of come along with them. I'm going to leave it to staff to define the implications on approval denial at this point. Um, but it's, we're a church, we're not really changing anything. Uh, we're just kind of reorienting a property line if all of that other stuff goes through. So I'm here to answer right. any other questions, so thank you. Thank you, Adam. <clears throat> Is there a motion on this item? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion for approval by Commissioner Allen and a second by, was that you, Alma? Is there any discussion? I just have a question. Uh, this, if if the uh, mayor and alderman approve this, then this would go into effect. And so, how would it actually affect the use of the land right now? So, it, what it really does is it changes the boundaries of the development plan for Christ Community Church to allow for some of the land to go into right. the Brownland Farm Absolutely. PUD. So it's really just, you know, they, go, they follow through together. Mm -hmm. At this point, what, what your recommendation is will travel to BOMA, but the real implication will come with the final approval. Mm -hmm. So most likely at the final approval they'll either i would say all be disapproved or all be approved most likely but that's up to the church if they still want to move forward with this um, development plan we would need more information most likely at that point um, if if there were different different motions mm -hmm. on the two items mm -hmm. but at this point since they're recommendations there's no final action tonight mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay any other questions or comments by roll call vote we've got a, a motion for approval uh, made by commissioner allen and seconded by alma mclemore um, commissioner allen aye commissioner franks aye commissioner harrison aye commissioner mclemore aye commissioner orr aye 
Alderman Peterson? Aye. And Chair Lindsay votes aye. So the motion passes. That concludes our agenda. Is there a motion for adjournment? Second. We have a motion by Scott Harrison and Marsha, I think. We did. <clears throat> Commissioners? Do you mind uh, signing this resolution for me real quick here? That's for the uh, the Envision Franklin. Oh, okay. So Michael, uh, 